believe what you're telling me. In your reality, I'm a character in fiction? Yep, and I'm an actor who plays you on TV. But there's someone here I knew you had to meet. He's the man who created you for fans all over the world. And I said to Jack, what if his skin turns green? Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm looking for some guy named Stan Lee. What? Spider-Man? Uh, Pam, hold my calls for a while. I, I think I've finally gone crazy. Oh, man! Wow! And, uh, let me hit record here. No, Aaron, you're wrong. That's all I want to oh. hear. No. Nope. Own your mistakes, damn it. So, uh, th there, there is a mistake that I made last week, audience, that I said Kirby... Jack Kirby and Stan Lee were the ones that created Spider-Man. It was actually Stan Lee and Steven Get Ditko. But one of the reasons, and I looked into it a little bit more, people actually think that Kirby had more to do with Spider-Man than Ditko did. And I know Stan Lee says, you know, all these stories and what he took a lot of he took credit for a lot of stuff that wasn't his. And you know, rest in peace, Stan Lee. They can't try to steal your blood now. Um, what? <laughs> But you you didn't hear that story? No. Like people oh, were okay. stealing his blood when he was in the nursing, the nursing home, home for a little bit. Oh yeah, oh. because Kevin Smith had offered for him to come live with him. Stan Lee said he would take mm -hmm. care of him. So I remember that. I do remember that, but I did not know it was in regards to this blood situation. Yes, stealing blood, Stan Lee's blood. So we are talking the Amazing Spider-Man series 1 and 2, and then possibly some of the films that were supposed to happen afterwards but didn't. Andrew Garfield as the cool Peter Parker and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy, which I don't know if you guys, I, I don't think John's on Instagram that or you are kind of but um, yeah. if you look at the reels like for some reason people were obsessed with andrew garfield and emma stone again like uh, when they were dating and worried yeah. like in, in being so you're seeing all these like reels that like i don't know they're romanticizing that shit which in reality they're probably like yeah no we don't like each other yeah i don't know i think it's are they dating like, again Is no of course not they, people make it seem like that that that's the case but everyone thinks their lives are movies and they, they just want them to be back together again i was oh, just watching TikToks. something i was just watching something today where they were talking about how there's a resurgence in these relationships that people wanted to happen like jennifer aniston and brad pitt and all that shit like the people are really getting into it again well i don't it's, know why i'll be honest with you and we don't obsessed with actors or or stuff like that in a sense we obsess with the culture around it but people that completely and utterly oh thank you sorry coffee <laughs> brought to you by uh, yeah um, thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> um, people are obsessed with actors and actresses i don't get it a lot of the time it's just ignorant people that don't have enough going on in their lives oh my god that's such good coffee i'm <laughs> again brought to you by folders amazing spider-man directed by mark webb and then john you said it was written by a uh, vanderbilt it was yeah it was written by james uh, vanderbilt hold on james yes Yep. Yeah. Oh, it was? Of um, the Vanderbilts. Yeah. Now, with this one, Amazing Spider-Man, we have the origin story, again, just like in Sam Raimi's, and Gwen Stacy is now the love interest in this rather than MJ. So I'm not exactly sure what universe or maybe possible story this was taken from, but what ends up happening, Dr... Dr. Kurt Connors. Dr. Connors. Oscorp is experimenting on these spiders, in order to, well, I don't know. Actually, that goes into Spider-Man 2, doesn't it? They're working no. on some type of regenerative. No, that's animals. in the first one. Yeah, it's in the first one. They're, the Oscorp is working in bioengineering with uh, using what comes in nature as a way mm -hmm. of defense for human beings and stuff like I that. I think it's that's called the, cross genetics or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something of yep. that nature where they're using insect and animal DNA to better enhance what the human race if you will say so it doesn't get more in depth until they get into amazing spider-man 2 yeah i was gonna say so dr connors he's more or less similar to the the villain what is it will defoe's green goblin 
where they're on these deadlines and all this research that they have they want to start doing human trials but it's not safe enough to do mm -hmm. yet mm -hmm. literally i would hate to say like it's literally raimi's first spider-man as well yes they also touch on the fact that dr connors was good friends with uh, peter parker's dad peter parker's dad so, so yeah yeah going forward dr connors then becomes he's able to grow his arm back after he shoots himself or inoculates himself with the serum and then slowly becomes the lizard which was i i think a pretty cool villain at the same time and i know we're gonna get into this now but the sub story with peter's father i could give a shit I know it's gonna be two against one, but I'm willing I'm to take that fucking battle all the way shit. Because I feel like that's I feel like that's utter and complete bullshit. And this is probably oh. the most serious I'm gonna get about that. The reason why I say that is because this particular storyline comes from Ultimate Spider-Man, which I loved. I love that storyline. And I like the fact that they were doing the bioengineering with the animals because it kind of broke down. It was also being done in the spectacular Spider-Man cartoon that came on Disney. So that was what I liked about that. Now, I will say everything that was going on with his dad, the rushing of his father, like, hey, we got to go. I, you know, that they didn't really detail anything else. And they didn't detail <laughs> anything else. I, I don't know what his dad's name is. Who it cares? Matter, it was terrible, John. The fact, the fact, it was terrible. the fact Probably of the Chad matter Peters. is, yeah, Chad Peters. The guy who played uh, him was, uh, is Parker, a good Chad Parker. Oh, Chad Parker. There we go. Yeah. Sorry. My <laughs> argument is this. They were following a specific storyline that I thought was good. And I thought that them introducing the subway lab or whatever that was and the engineering of the spiders from osborne i know you said that. it but what storyline was it again ultimate spider-man i believe okay it, okay it was in the ultimate storyline i believe that's what that story was about his dad was engineering the, these things with osborne osborne was going to use them for something else he had to go in hiding ends up getting killed it's a whole big thing it but, it's like I, fucking jason Bourne all of a sudden like all of a sudden Peter Parker's parents are important. You said it's from the comic book. I don't think the general population knows that, but that's okay. As long as you make it interesting, but nobody yeah. in general gives a fuck about Peter Parker's parents. And they I didn't would, make oh, me give a fuck. Take a poll on that, Don. I really Ooh, put, it on <laughs> yeah, put it on Twitter. Put it on Twitter. Nobody, <laughs> except for you. I, I dis I except for you. with that. I disagree with that. Well, but the way they depicted the it, it wasn't interesting to me. It was like, all right, whatever. Because you yeah. know why they had so many subplot within both of these movies that we're going to get to. But the, uh, yes, and that's OK. That's where you and I can come to an accord. The subplots were the problem. There was far too many facets being included in the story that a lot of things were left unchecked, especially the Mr. Fears. I didn't like the Mr. Fears. That was the guy who showed up and was asking questions yeah. about Peter at the end. How the fuck did that he was, get in the prison? Who, who is he? What was his whole purpose? So I I will agree that yes, there was. He was supposed to round that. up all the supervillains. That's what he was. Yeah, and I will admit I'm biased because I love Spider Man. So any little tidbit I can get, I'll take it. So. I'm biased, so it'd be good to have a poll just to see where everybody's at on that. At least you're a fan's fan, John, but at the same time, you will take healthy criticism and you don't scream at people who don't agree no. with you. Good for you, no. John. We've known each other long enough where if we disagree on something, <laughs> man, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to give you any problems. Oh, you I mean, I'm, I'm the, just I, yeah, it's I'm the complete comic. opposite. Yeah. I'll I'll yell at you guys and fart into the mic. <laughs> <laughs> if I think I'm right, <laughs> both are acceptable. And talk into it afterwards. Yeah. yeah, but to keep going, I think that the lizard character was a really good way to go because they did introduce Kurt Connors in Spider Man 1 and 3 in the Tobey Maguire series because he was just a professor at the college yep. where Peter was going. But yep. nothing was, I did not see that actor playing the lizard. He's a good actor. He's a good character actor, but I did not see him playing I, the lizard. If they wanted to go that route, I think he could have done it, but it mostly okay. would have been CGI. Yes. You know, kind of looking disgusting there for a second because yeah. he always looks, that actor in particular, and I can't remember his name, everything he yeah. does, he usually looks pretty clammy. Yeah, yeah, I get you. So, 
kind of yeah. lizardy. But I was gonna say, like Emma Stone, who plays Gwen Stacy, I realized too, I'm like, well, if she had been around for Tobey Maguire, she could have been MJ. Like her red hair when she's had red hair before, she yeah. could have played an. You're MJ. really obsessed yeah, with she that. Did have. What MJ red hair? Yes. Yeah, you really. <laughs> Yes, uh, she would have been great. I didn't like her in this. Well, I didn't. Ugh. We'll get. To I thought that. she was a good Gwen Stacy. I thought she was pretty good. It'd be. It's gonna be awesome if they continue with this multiverse and possibly introduce Spider Gwen, and then it's her. Oh, I think that would be, be awesome. That would be great. And you know, just to touch on the Spider Verse, every character that is voicing with the exception of the guy who voices miles also plays somebody in the marvel universe spider gwen is played by kate bishop yep in hawkeye the guy who's going to be playing moon knight voices spider 2029 and then katherine hahn who played the evil witch Agatha Harkness was Doctor Octopus Octavia yes in there. yep yeah, you're right so yep. that's what it was so I am very interested. The Spider-Man mythos for me is just great. It really is. And I like how it has gone, how it has gone and flourished online and in the comic fandom that we have. But the other thing that I will admit is in these movies, we're all in agreement, at least I think we are, is that Andrew Garfield played a good Spider-Man, but he was yeah. not a good Peter Parker. A hundred percent. And that's what people said in the production or reviews. He was really good as playing that smart alecky Spider-Man, but he was just way too cool, too cool for being too cool, for being man. Peter Parker. Uh, Peter Parker. That's not his fault, though. And, no, no. I, and you said that before. It's not. It it's it, not it really fault. just depends on the direction and casting. Well, you can't some of it him. was his fault. Because I yeah. felt like throughout the film, these long scenes with him and Gwen Stacy, yeah. I felt like some of it was ad lib a little bit. And I think the director allowed it because obviously the actors have great chemistry. They were dating at the mm. time. And I felt like some of it was like, all right, they're ad libbing. You can kind of yeah. tell. And it just went on way too fucking long. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I get it. He likes her. She likes him. Yeah. Let's move yeah. on. A lot yeah. of pacing problems, a lot of editing problems. I didn't like how it was shot, but the stunts were great. Fantastic. Yeah. Effects were great. The costume, okay. meh. The first one, I didn't like it. The second one, I did like it. All right. Can I say that I really wanted the lizard to succeed? Like, it would Oh, you wanted us to be lizard that? people? Oh, I would have loved that, Jesus dude. Like, I Even really that was that. dumb. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's fighting for us to be lizard people. That was the next evolution, bro. It was the next step in that. Nobody this wants not, to be a lizard not person. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> yeah, they did look this like that. King Koopa. Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, he they did. did. He, looked he like... did. He looked like a Goomba. A yeah. Goomba. Yes. Yeah, he sure did. But it was the next step in evolution, man. I like. Sorry to our Italian listeners. Oh. <laughs> I love Italian. That's true. I love Italian yeah. food. But you know what? I have what Italian friends. Is, um, the actor who played him was really good. I like him as an actor. Reese Iphen, I think that's how you pronounce yes. it. Or yeah, I I just know that his performance was done well. Yes. And I'm glad they brought him back for No Way Home. So that yeah, was good. And I wanna add something that we talked about last week as far as villains. So last week we said that aside from aside from Heath Ledger. Willem's Defoe's villain, Green Goblin, was pretty much a tour de force. Yep. And I agree with that. And I like Jack Nicholson too, but it was the eighties. No, so bro, I mean, no. <laughs> it, just, it was. just like Toby Maguire. Look, if you and we did rewatch those movies, it's very campy, but yeah. it still felt like a cinematic yeah. experience that mm -hmm. never forgot that it was based off of a comic book and i yes. feel like these two movies kind of forgot that it was just like all right let's go for this is going to be in 3d yeah. web the director wanted a huge imax experience it was very uh -huh. visual but at the same time they debuted this new camera at the time the red epic camera and was shot in mm -hmm. 3d and 5k resolution which is great cinematographer john schwartzman i just wanted to mention him it looked great, but it doesn't have the same staying power as the Tobey Maguire trilogies. I don't know what it is. I don't know why 
that film look better than this film, but I feel like the way they played with the shadows and the colors, mm -hmm. it felt like it's a movie, but it's still based off a comic. This one just felt like a dry, dead movie. And it like was, they weren't going for comic no noir uh, no background. Nothing. They were doing, yeah, it was more like, we're going to do a movie called Spider-Man, but we're not going to base it off the comic. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get you. This was also the last, or it was a couple last. James Horner, who did the scoring, this was his last scoring. And he under, good. He passed, he passed away. Oh, not uh, good. Oh, yeah, I forgot. 2015. That's right. Yeah, three years before his death. Yeah. And then this Sorry. was also the God damn last. Don. <laughs> Don. Hey, I'm coming in hot. I'm sorry. <laughs> I uh, forgot he was dead. Oh, my God. I'm editing that out. This was also the last for, let's see. for Dennis both. Leary's career? Oh, oh. yeah, yeah. Oh, did, you didn't like him as Captain Stacy? He I just plays like Dennis him. Leary and everything. Yeah, that he it does. was just another rescue me. But I don't That's... even know. I don't e yeah, I was going to say, I don't even know if he's done anything after that. Except he did Amazing Spider-Man 2 where he just stands there looking all sullen because he's dead and doesn't want Peter yeah. to fucking talk to Gwen anymore. And this was J. Michael Rivera, the one of the producers. That's this was their last film production design, and the last or after that was Django Unchained. So that was it. Well, this was the director's second movie. He did mm -hmm. Five Hundred Days of Summer before this, and really he that, was regarded as a music director before yeah. making movies and doing television. So I can kind of see that in the filmmaking in these two movies. However, man. What, like Amazing Spider-Man 2 when they're going into the clock tower and it looks like it's a musical as they're talking and the way that he's moving? But it explains yeah. a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Because it's over, like, everything, all their movements and everything, Andrew Garfield's movements, yeah. it's something that you would see in a musical. And it's literally the scene where he's, him and Gwen are going into whatever that clock tower is and he doesn't want her to go with it. It's, well, let's not, that's what okay. it reminds me of. No, I agree. Let's go to the beginning again, because I want to really hit this home. So it seemed like from the very beginning, from this first movie, they want to separate themselves from the... Sam uh, Raimi? They want to separate themselves from Sam Raimi's films by doing something different, but not something that totally goes against his trilogy. So they focus on not the origins of Spider-Man so much. They want to focus on the origins of Peter Parker and his okay. story. I like yes. that. I did like that, but I did notice it took about 35 to 40 minutes before he actually got into the Spider-Man suit, which took a long fucking time compared to the Raimi films where the pace was like, okay, Peter Parker's a loser. Peter Parker's a nerd. Peter Parker loves MJ. Peter Parker lost Uncle Ben. Bam, he's in the suit by 15, 15 minutes. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, From yeah. 15 minutes to 30. 30 or 35 minutes it's like wow they really want to hit home the peter parker story which isn't really interesting like i don't give a shit how he was as a kid and why he lost his parents but that's just me so i do like the idea of them focusing on peter parker as a boy but as you move on he grows up he's in high school he's raised by uncle ben and mary J, which were great great casting decisions to go with sally fields and I may not Mary Jane. <laughs> what, did, what did I say? You said he was raised by Uncle Ben and Mary Jane. <laughs> oh, my, maybe a weed? I don't know. Uh, I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah. Uncle, Aunt May. Aunt May. Aunt May. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aunt Sally Phil as Aunt May. And who's the other guy? Martin uh, Sheen. Martin Sheen. Sheen. Jesus Christ. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, yeah. yes. My whole point is, so through all that maturation under the wing of those two people with gold hearts. What ends up happening? What ends up happening? Similar yeah. to Raimi, he didn't stop a robber from robbing a store, which honestly, I don't blame him. Like, yeah, fuck it. The guy was a dick. The clerk was a dick. If you see the movie, he was trying to buy milk. The store clerk was a dick. Then he ends up subsequently getting robbed, of course. And then right away, Uncle Ben dies, which took a long fuck. Like I said, this was like 30 minutes within the film. Uncle Ben dies in a weird fucking way, too. The guy basically who robbed the store trips, falls, gun falls out. Uncle Ben sees the gun. The guy wasn't bothering anybody. He just robbed the store, but he didn't rob the store by gunpoint. 
he wasn't really endangering anybody, but somehow <laughs> they wrote that Uncle Vin sees a gun is instead of like running out the way or like or, or like hey oh shit he fucking lunges at the gun and they go to have a struggle and Uncle Ben gets shot and I'm thinking like he kind of deserved that shit like why were hey, you fuck, lunging wait, at the gun on, he, 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 with he great power comes great responsibility and, and that's my point Uncle Ben had them guns going why was uncle ben going for the gun that wasn't being pointed at him that made so had that made no power, sense but he needed to stop the robber that he didn't know happen. he was being robbed but he... the fact that what i'm saying is it had to happen because then peter would not have learned from that this... that's my second point uncle ben in that movie the web film he sees uncle ben die he gets mad and the genesis of him being Spider-Man isn't because he has Uncle Ben's like teachings in his head saying, hey, I got to be a good person. I have all this power. I want to do good. No, in that film, it's revenge. This motherfucker turns into Batman, basically. That's what Toby did. Toby no, did the no at thing. the very, okay, he did for a second. He realizes that this is the guy that he could have stopped in, in earlier in the movie. And then he he stops himself, and the guy trips over himself and dies. And mm -hmm. then subsequently, after that, he just becomes a hero because he wants mm -hmm. to do good. Mm -hmm. Throughout the whole movie, this guy is on a venge quest of beating up random ass people that fits the description. And then when he finally figures out, oh, that's not them, he lets them go. Like that's mm -hmm. not a hero. This is totally different from what Peter Parker Spider-Man is. And I didn't that's one of the things I it was like that kind of changes the whole thing. He wasn't really a nerd. He was a nerd, but he was more so I'm talking about Peter Parker now. He was an outsider. Yes. That's the best way to put it. He was an outsider. He was yeah. he, like, he was a, like he's a genius. Reeves in point break. <laughs> yeah. Yes. He was a genius. <laughs> Yeah. I give I okay, I will give the film credit for that. They did emphasize how smart this guy is mm -hmm. in order to explain how he can make his own web and how he can keep up with Dr. Connors. I got that. That was good writing. But I didn't like that this it was basically like seeing Batman shoot a gun in the Snyder movies or not the Snyder movies, but the Justice League movies. It's like yeah. something's missing and so, it's Well I, I was gonna say is like the most iterations of any comic book hero right now, as far as I know, is Batman, second Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I think if you look at it, they're kind of one and the same. I don't know. Well, with the way you guys are talking, no, you guys, Peter Parker, it sounds like Batman and Peter. Pro well, Peter Parker was not power. vengeful like that. Not no, like no, no, no. But that's I'm not, not saying that's that. That's not necessarily true, though. I mean, it depends on your definition of vengeful the to the point. In that movie, John, the yeah, first movie, yeah. he was vengeful. Yeah. He was yeah. beating up any blonde hair, yeah. five eight between five eight and six feet guy that he can find. He yeah. hacked into the police scanner, and when he heard like uh, the description, he would go out there, beat their ass, and then check their wrists to see if they had that star tattoo. And then when he didn't find it, he just let them go instead of like. Occasionally, he would hand them into the uh, authorities, mm -hmm. but Dennis Leary's character was right. Like, he is a fucking menace. This guy is just beating up random people and letting them go. But I think that plays the part into him having to learn. He had to learn, man. Like, I'm not saying what he was doing was right, but every superhero stumbles. I mean, Batman ain't you know, infallible. You know, he's done some fucked up shit, especially in the more recent dc films with him branding people you know so i mean a hundred percent but yeah. i give batman more leeway than i do spider-man because okay what's batman's true power money spider-man yeah. is a super fucking human being and i feel like well my whole point with uncle ben i feel like what you were saying when we we're talking about the the raimi movies yeah. is uncle ben was so essential and I feel like they kind of like totally dismissed that by and just I saying, hey, that, this yeah. person killed somebody I love. But they didn't say why he loved Uncle Ben. Like what yeah. what kind of lessons did he well, learn? Because I'll be honest with you. I don't think Uncle Ben was the uncle, same Uncle Ben in exactly. Raimi's. I think Gwen Stacy in the second one, because they were planning on making more, Gwen Stacy was the Ben. 
Yes, that's a good point. I, I can see that because that does come up in the No Way Home. It does come up. So, I mean, and then my other thing, too, is they omit Ben for Marissa Tomei's Aunt May. And I felt like that just was too much. I liked her as Aunt May. I liked her what she was doing. But I just think that that whole that it just omits the okay. mythos completely. John, last time I said, hey, that'll kind of get explained. Yeah. in the new Spider-Man. So did did you agree with my assessment? Because to I, me, Uncle Ben in that universe was mm-hmm. Tony Stark. So okay. to me, yeah. mm-hmm. each Spider-Man, spoiler alert, it's not really a spoiler alert, but every mm-hmm. Spider-Man had a tragedy that basically changed the trajectory of their heroism. Like it changed, it was like, okay, I understand what I got to do now. Uncle yeah. Ben dying, changed Peter Parker into Spider-Man. And basically, Tony Stark was the Uncle Ben in this universe that changed Tom Holland's Spider-Man. So it made totally sense. Yeah, I and, could see that. And Aunt May is I still could, Aunt May, you know? Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. I just felt like, I don't know, I'm like, don't mess with Coke. If Coke is good, don't change the recipe. So That's the, why yeah. are you going against me when I say these two fucking films sucked? Because they did no, change. They man. did change Coke. <laughs> they changed Coke. No, they, no. That's exactly what they did. My head is about to explode. Okay. <laughs> How did you feel about the music? No, no. Okay. okay. How did, okay. James Horner did the music. May I rephrase okay. it? Let me rephrase it. I agree with your assessment on these two films. I just felt that the little extra that they added was not that big a deal. It didn't take anything away from me, but it did leave me a little conflicted because of how the stories were going. It was like, it's almost like you're making a sweater, you're knitting a sweater and then you stop and you're like, well, here you go. The sweater's not complete. It stops at the midriff. What the fuck? Like, it just, it, it wasn't enough. There but wasn't what if more. the sweater that you were knitting was ugly? It was like, why would you want to complete it? <laughs> would you want to complete that. that shit? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true too, but... Aaron, what'd you think about the music? Danny Elfman, we didn't talk about it in the first volume. He did... That's probably why I liked it so much. Elfman, hands down. <laughs> That's why I probably said, Bat- oh, this shit reminds me of Batman. Well, duh, Danny Elfman did yeah. the fucking music soundtrack. Yeah. And you know, I'm a big music guy. This guy, James Horner, did the, at least the first Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Did you have any feelings about that? No. <laughs> me, and you know me either. What, and- no, uh, my whole thing was, is I'm a story guy. I wasn't listening to the music. If the music is there and is flowing with the film, to me, it's like a nice mustard on a sandwich, a, a nice gray poupon on some. Ham. They were getting ready to Schumacher it too. So, well, that's like the second said. one. Yeah, yeah. The second one was a Schumacher. Well, they did and do, then, they do, they did. But they Dane, did. yeah. Dane DeHaan is green goblin. Green goblin and then oh Jamie Foxx is electro. Oh. Oh. And then Felicia Hardy got introduced. So, you know, they were planning on doing a black cat at one point. Yep. And then there was a deleted scene that a lot of people didn't see where Norman's head was frozen. And Mr. Fears goes and talks to Norman and lets him know, like, hey, old friend, it's time to wake up. And the eyes open up in the frozen head. That was Chris Cooper, who was going to be the original Green Goblin. So that was the lead scene for that. But I that just, never made it. Well, yeah, because they literally well, they let's, packed so I, much into that movie. Yeah, I didn't like Rhino as much. I was upset with that ending. What, like a, a fat, middle-aged, 50-year-old Paul Giamatti is yeah, Rhino? Yeah, like, that was <laughs> ridiculous. You could have got a wrestler for that. But, I mean, what kind of costume could you have went with? Seriously. Dude, the spandex. I, 100%. Not, you could have no, done CGI. I, Look at Juggernaut. Uh, well, CGI, yes. Okay, CGI would have been great. Yeah. But you could but you could not have done that with just spandex. That would have looked tacky. So the way that I look at Raimi's Spider Man, that was like Tim Burton's yeah, yeah. and then you get into the amazing Spider Man, it's a little bit of Schumacher, but mostly like Nolan in a sense, because it's more real mm-hmm. life and then you know, you're getting into well, I would say the Marvel ones are a thousand times better than the Batman movies that Zack Snyder made. Yeah. So, and everyone, I think I've made this hot take already. Justice League was a mediocre movie. What, the, the Snyder, Snyder version? The Snyder yes. cut? 
Yeah. I thought you loved it. Oh, I loved it. Boo. I loved it. It was the movie. It was the movie that we deserved originally, but it was still mediocre. I Compared to liked, what? I like. Did you the, like it, the actual story, the direction? There's no balance of anything. Like, it's just all over the fucking place. I constantly. just like the dark side. That's all I like. That's, that's all the, I cared about. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to see like. dark side. And but Martin, at least you had a villain uh, that you uh, like. All right. This is, we got yeah, a villain I like, now. I just like dark side saying. Stepping nuts. What about stepping nuts? He's pretty good, right? He no? was yeah. better in, in the Snyder cut. Look, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Like, like a and... fucking manatee. <laughs> or a fucking stingray. That's what he looked like. A yeah. goddamn stingray for I like I just liked all of Apocalypse. I did. I liked how they set that up and how Desaad said that I knew Steppenwolf was gonna fail. And Darkseid is like, We're gonna do it the old now that I know where my prize is, we're gonna do the old way. And I, I liked how he was going off and everybody was bowing and Granny Goodness was there. And yeah, man, Granny I, Goodness was looking fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, I just, I, um, I'm um i telling you, man, I'm definitely interested to see wh- how, fuck, I lost my train of thought. Oh, no, I, I would love yeah. to see the Snyderverse continued, but hopefully these films get better. Like yeah. Batman versus Superman, there were so many issues with that. And everyone's like, restore the Snyderverse. And I'm like, and honest, like the reason why I loved it so much was because the nerds, the audience were the ones that pushed this and we got it done. Yeah. Fans Same thing with Sonic. Yeah. Same thing with Sonic. Yeah. But I think Warner Brothers, they, I don't think they'll ever let that happen, mainly because they do not want audiences to tell them, you know, like, no, what that's they over. Want to see. No, 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 I don't, no, I don't, I don't do agree that. with that. I don't agree with that. They want, they want the money. They want that cheese. So that's yeah, but uh, you know, like creatives in like those executives think that they know what we want. It's what's his name? Thing. The president Walter Hamada, I think, is his name. Yeah, that piece of shit. He's not. He's not going to change anything, dude. <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not. As far as I'm concerned, they botched the whole cyborg situation. The actor who plays yep. cyborg, they botched that. You don't think it was kind of rectified in the Snyder cut because he was far more interesting in that cut i'm like no i'm 100 well that but in real life i'm talking about how they handled that situation with the actor was piss poor yeah they blacklisted him more or less yeah 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 he's Um, not going to be able to get any more jobs anywhere he got he got one recently and i think it's i I forgot what it was called it's like well in back to spider-man so So let's let's end the first ones the first one at the end dennis larry's character captain stacy so basically at the end george george stacy george yes. he yeah. learns the identity of spider-man the guy he's been hunting his white whale he learns that yeah. it's peter parker so instead of like wow this guy really does do some good he does the ultimate cock block of just like all right i'm about to die what can i say to this guy don't date my daughter that was fucked up yeah, yeah. but it was like i get it he's a cop yeah I understand he doesn't want her to go through the tragedy that mm-hmm. his wife that he knows is going to go through. So he says, mm-hmm. don't date my daughter, please. So the, this guy's dying wish is don't date my fucking daughter. Yes. Fucking Peter Parker, Garfield's version of Peter Parker, Webb's version of Peter Parker. Seems like he's going to agree to this. But what did this motherfucker do at the end? Totally like, fuck that. I'm going to date this bitch. And then he tried, he, he did try to get away from her. Well, the, uh, well uh-huh. he does say in the movie, like, oh, you, you, you're you a good kisser. So maybe he, he really liked her kissing. Yeah. Oh, that tried, Ray he, Fisher, real quick, that Ray Fisher series is Women of the Movement. It's on ABC. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I just feel like he's a good cyborg. And he is. And. They fucked him over, so that's all I got to say about that. But in regards to the end of Amazing Spider-Man, him having to leave Gwen or not date her is is shitty because... And I mean, really, dude, we've had this conversation before. Superheroes dating, that takes away from the ass kicking you know let the ass kicking go on and you know i don't really care which very briefly because okay like i said it sounds like i'm shitting on the first one and i am 
However, I did like <laughs> No, I am. I am. I am. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. But I did like it for mm-hmm. two reasons. The stature of Spider-Man. Finally, we, we get to see a lean, tall-ish type of Spider-Man similar to a lot of the comics. I did like that. I like that they emphasize Peter Parker's genius. Like, he mm-hmm. is... He, he grew up a genius, you know, but I do, in a way, like the offset of Garfield's depiction of him, of kind of being a little cool, mm-hmm. a little cool. I did like it. Mm-hmm. I believed it. I, I attached to it to it a little bit more. I know. I know. I know. No. But it's like, okay. No, dude. If it's we're, like if Keanu we're not Reeves with a fucking kid's chemistry set. That's how it looked like to me. Keanu Reeves is cool as fuck. But. How about I like probably... the dialogue? I like the written dialogue i don't like the person playing peter parker because i think he's he's just too fucking cool and he looks so, li- almost like a model sometimes when the he talks musical scene that i was talking about where he's moving and flailing his arms yeah. when stacy that right there was a version of ad lib they just kept it going and kept it going yeah. and i'm just like shut the fuck up was it was it ad libbing it sounded like Garfield it. is a good actor, and I think the director, being a, this is his second movie, I think he trusted him. But it, unlike, let's say, Robert Downey Jr. doing it, where it's quick, snappy, gets to the point, I think the director didn't have enough. This is me talking, Don talking, Double D. I don't think he had the balls to say, all right, that was a little bit, that's too much. And you got to yeah. think about this movie had, I think, three three editors. Three fucking yeah. editors, dude. That's kind of. Can weird. I bring something up? Since uh, you brought up Robert Downey Jr., you do see that they released leak of Tom Cruise as uh, yeah, I saw Iron that. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so there's an actual picture? There's an actual picture. Yeah, I saw a picture in his in his green suit on set as Tony Stark. I hope that's a joke. Dude. Multiverse of mayhem. Yeah, I want oh. it to be true, just so he hates it. Okay, let's jump into, I got to bring this up because in Amazing Spider-Man 2, the symbiote is seen in Amazing Spider-Man 2. So you have to slow it down real slow. This is for real nerds, like who just have nothing else better to do. (laughs) Slow down the scene where Dean DeHaan's character is walking through the armory, like where they have all the weapons and stuff at. Mm-hmm. You'll see the vulture's wings. You'll see Doc the rhinos, Doc Ox tentacles. You'll see rhino's armor. You'll also see a black goo swirling around in a glass vial. That's the Venom symbiote. When is that in the film? I don't remember. That is when, after he freed Electro and he's getting ready to go get the suit to help slow down his... It's called the Osborne curse or something. Curse. Yeah, yeah. Where it's oh. And that's like what a, I was. It, it was. It's a bunch of warts all over his. Uh, yeah, it was some. It, it was syphilis. some sort of. Some Syph- sort, yeah, it's syphilis. Yeah, syphilis. Syphilis. It's syphilis. It was some sort of syphilis. Polio. It was something because Osborne Norman had those long curled fingernails, so I was like, okay, he must be going through like this. Must be the Green Goblin thing. Like the ultimate Green Goblin where he's reptilian. That's what I thought it was. Mm. But no, it was this disease. Because if you look later on, Norman does evolve because he takes this formula into a goblin-esque monster that breathes fire. So, so let's, let's start from the beginning. Okay. Beginning of the film, All right. Peter Parker basically went against his promise to Gwen Stacy's dad. He is dating Gwen Stacy, and they're just frolicking around and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden he changes his mind like ah, you know what i'm gonna keep that promise which yeah. was so stupid it's like all right because he kept seeing visions of george stacy oh, popping up like the look of george stacy like oh this motherfucker <laughs> uh, i told him not to do it that's the that so was the stupid yeah. oh my god so wow. he he cancels her out meanwhile yeah. He bumps into what will be Electro and Jamie Foxx with a horrible comb over. Comb which... over and the gap teeth. And, oh my God. Uh, Harry's Riddler. In oh the beginning. It's campy God. and like he's nerdy. It's just yeah. like. A... Which is funny. Yeah. And I wanted to mention another what? thing about the first <laughs> one. I give 
a little bit of credit to Garfield's depiction of Spider-Man. Spider-Man himself is a little bit funnier than Tobey Maguire's, for sure. Sharper yeah. writing. However, yeah. it feels more like, feels kind of more like Deadpool, what he mm -hmm. would say, without the cuss words. So I kind of mm -hmm. like, I give it credit, and then I kind of take it away a little bit, because it's like, I didn't like that shit, man. You got people fucking getting robbed and dying. It, it's just not very heroic. And then we go to the second one. He saves Jamie Foxx's character, and Jamie Foxx gets, like, obsessed becomes, with him like single he's obsessed, yeah. single white female obsessed with this guy yeah he dumps gwen and then they introduce the harry character like they've known each other for all of these years it's like he's wait a minute don't, don't forget boarding. they've been away oh, he's been away at boarding Christ. school but he never don't mentions forget. him in the first movie he act don't like he didn't even know during, oscorp he didn't even know during, oscorp during all of this remember electro is made by Jamie Foxx falling into a, a vat of water with eels. It's that is how just, Electro is made. No, it's no. It's genetically enhanced no. eels, guys. Dog, dog. Do it right. That Two motherfucker's gap, one. his <laughs> gap in his tube got healed by eels. Like, that doesn't yeah. even make sense. <laughs> he lost all his hair and went blue it. We're talking about a guy who's swinging by automatic webs, and we're, this is your argument? Like, He's a glow <laughs> stick. <laughs> Why does a black man have a fucking comb over like that. I'm, come on, man. Really? Because it would not have looked right if he had the George Jefferson. Come on, dude. I, that would have been... <laughs> if, well, that, that I will give a little bit of credit. As much as I give credit to the Raimi films of being a little campy. Okay. That was like their first time where they kind of stabbed at campy. It didn't yeah. work. It was miserable. No, mm -hmm. it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. It was It terrible. was not good. I will admit. <laughs> and Jamie Foxx is funny. Been, he could have been just, he could have been just a utility worker, Max Dillon, the utility worker who who works there and could have been bald or whatever. He didn't have to be or balding. He, he, well, he could have, he could have been fired and then yeah. become, I don't know, get tech and whatnot and become the Jamie Foxx Electro. Yeah. In No Way Home. No Way Home. But that happens because he has an arc reactor on him. He gets that arc reactor mm -hmm. set up. So the arc reactor isn't invented in this one. So that's how come he didn't have that. For anybody set. that didn't see this film, the film yeah, starts. Sorry, guys, we're the, ruining the film. The film, well, it's a lot of spoilers it's, in this. The yeah, film starts with Peter Parker's parents again on a private jet trying to flee. For they're trying Osborne. to go to Boca Raton. They're trying to Boca get away from Osborne. <laughs> yeah, they're trying to get away from Osborne. And then all of a sudden, there's like a fucking, it turns into Jason Bourne's fucking spy on the plane that they're on. They're so yeah. close to Cancun for those bottomless margaritas. Exactly. <laughs> they, yeah. they, they abandoned their kid and their, their, their parents. Yeah. The spy that's on the plane, planted by Osborne or Oscorp, kills fucking the pilot. And yeah. then... Basically, is how about did we not know you were a spy? You're right, and then he kills. He's about to kill the you know Peter Parker's parents, but of course there is a fucking fight that ensues, and Peter Parker dad he overpowers the spy. That I don't know why fucking villains oh. do that. He could have just shot the motherfucker, but he wanted to gloat. Well, now that I'm reading on it, Richard Parker and Mary Parker were important to the Spider-Man sequence or that because not only were they scientists for Oscorp, they were also agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's what, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that might have, but that's not touched on because we don't exactly. know about fucking S.H.I.E.L.D. Exactly. Yet, so. <laughs> so why even put it in the film? Yeah, yeah. But anyway. I didn't even know that. That's Oh, no, weird. I knew that even back then, but it was like, yeah. this is right around when, well, this is 2012. We got to yeah. think of, well, 2014. So, so uh, what is it? Marvel had already come out with movies introducing it, S.H.I.E.L.D. And then yes. was there going to be a possible connection? Because the talks had started, I think, back yeah. in 2012. This was the last Columbia produced film for Spider-Man uh -huh. and Sony. Because we didn't even talk about that. Why it wasn't a Spider-Man 4 for Tobey Maguire. Subsequently. Uh, we just know that he... He did an interview, Toby did an interview discussing that there was going to be a four, 
but at that time, it's funny because he was doing an interview at that time. Talks had broke down, so he didn't even know that it wasn't going to be a four. At least that's how the interview. Well, you know what uh, Ramey said. He well, reportedly he said that he didn't think he could come out with a good script in time for the deadline mm -hmm. that represented what the first three represented. So he just kind of let it lapse and. Mm -hmm. Instead of like expanding on what he did, they just wanted to do a reboot. Um, well, to be quite honest, I'm kind of glad how everything has culminated. Me too. With the series, like it's it was a good ending. They wrapped up a lot of loose ends. Mm -hmm. Characters that knew each other in this last one, you didn't think they knew each other, but they they did. So it it got all wrapped up. I I really like how they did that. Now you um, you're talking about the Tom Holland one. Yes, I liked how they ended everything. I'm not thinking about these other two movies. All I know is Spider-Man 2, he tried to beat a mechanical rhino. We don't know what happened. <laughs> but <laughs> apparently, apparently he shows up. But before just... we even get there, you got yeah. fucking Harry Osborn away. Yeah. Who's the actor who plays him? Dean DeHaan. Dean DeHaan. Yep. Seems like a good actor. He is a very good actor. Yeah. They have good actors in both of these movies. Let me first say that. And I give Alex Garfield. Andrew Garfield. <laughs> I give Andrew Garfield a lot of credit. He does most of his stunts. I've seen the behind the scenes of him doing his own stunts. He's a very athletic guy. I like his stature. He fits the mold of Spider-Man. And of course, if you see No Way Home, like no man he's he's a good spider-man however you write or, or whoever said it like he's not a good peter parker but he's definitely yeah. a fucking good spider-man mm -hmm. and the effects in these movies both of them are fucking great mm -hmm. i think they're way better than the toby Maguire ones but that's just the phase of technology that has really nothing, right you know what i'm saying but mm -hmm. a lot of the things that they did right was they didn't rely on cgi effects as much as i thought they did because doing the research i just thought cgi 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 but after learning what they did it's an eight foot lizard okay well that uh okay <laughs> jamie fox is a glow stick yeah, yeah. i'm trying to g find some positive points in this film there are none no two for me, there, there was two. no positive points <laughs> two. in this movie? I give it two. What is it? The one positive? Well, no, it didn't even happen. I really wanted that kid to get just railed by the rhino. Oh, uh, yeah, the kid that went up front. I didn't like yeah. that kid. I was like, this is stupid. Everyone in, what is it, the New York Police Department that was there that day should have been fired. Yeah, that kid <laughs> going out there. First off, that parent should have got arrested for parental neglect. negligence. <laughs> yeah, and then the, the him going out there with that Spider-Man outfit on, thinking that he was going to take on the Russian rhino. Like, why are the people looking as shit is getting destroyed? Shouldn't they be yeah. running away? What the fuck are they I doing? And I wanted to know more about this rhino suit because the concept was good. It is a rhino, R-I-N-O suit in the comic, but I wanted to know what was the basics. Like, is it a, from what I understood, it was a tank or was it a bio? Like, what, is he a cyborg now? Like, what? No, no it was just a, it was a tank. Yeah. It was I literally mean, just Paul that was Giamatti's the Michael Bay, like that was the Michael Bay moment. Shoulders and yeah. his fat fucking head and his double chin just sitting there trying you to know, make so, a crappy russian accent so i'm taking it that paul giamatti didn't win you over <laughs> if i could punch anyone in the I face i love paul, paul giamatti, giamatti but really? that wasn't i love you him like, you didn't like uh paul giamatti i like paul giamatti yeah but he was miscast sideways i was just about to mention that movie, <laughs> you didn't like man. sideways yeah no i want to punch him in the face oh wow isn't man, sandman that's... in that movie too is no, Sandman no, is no. in. Uh, yes, he three. is. No, Sandman no, is in, three. in the movie Sideways. Oh yeah, no, oh, yeah. yeah. Thomas Hayden you got Sandman oh, and Rhino, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that fucking movie. Really? Uh, yeah. I, Aaron, I'm shocked. That seemed, I, I am too. That was like too. very. I, that I was like a. It was just kind of like when independent films were coming out, and yeah. it was just like, oh, this is this is an independent movie. It's Sideways. It's with. Paul Giamatti and Thomas Hayden Church. 
Yeah, it's an independent film. Oh, and I'm like, you know to... how much it was backed by? Like, no, this is not an independent film. When indie films were coming out, then everyone took credit for movies. Sorry, I'm pointing. Took credit for fucking movies that they were not independent films. Oh, okay. Okay, so wait, what wait, you're wait, saying wait, wait, is, wait, wait. Your argument is, oh, go ahead, Don. I'm sorry. Okay. But no, what, it, what I was going to ask you, Aaron, it's like an independent movie in is it took yeah. a very small budget to make, but that doesn't mean after the fact when it gets like big budget studios behind it that is still not an independent film i don't like movies that like um 60 year olds go and see on a sunday afternoon those movies are <laughs> worthless to me oh my god why it's uh, worthless. Yeah. what do you mean why <laughs> why can't 60 year olds see films <laughs> what yeah. why they've had their time oh shit <laughs> Dude, that's like twenty three years away from us. Yeah. Shut up. Did that, ma- <laughs> <laughs> Did that that make you sad? I'm, I'm ageist. Actually, twenty two years. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah. So oh, I do get what you're saying, and I didn't care too much for the. I wanted to know what the armor was, and then it's saying here he was supposed to play a, the Rhino again in the Amazing Spider Man three. But the franchise was canceled and later rebooted with Homecoming. So it would have been cool, or maybe it would have been too much to have had him in this one as well. Because Rhino is a part of Sinister Six. It would have been great to have seen him in this one. But So are both of these films based off the ultimate Spider-Man? Yes. Because so... Mark Webb said he introduced a few elements from that comic. But he said instead of Gwen Stacy being a punk rocker, he wanted to, like, really emphasize the romantic relationship, which I thought he did way fucking too much in the second film. And Mm -hmm. at one point, Peter Parker, he distanced himself from her, which I liked, because then they have this whole montage of him just being, like, stuck in his work and being Mm -hmm. Spider-Man. Which is I like, think, I can relate to that shit. Like, oh my God. I'm pun- he, it almost looked like he was punching the clock to be Spider-Man. But okay. then at one point, he starts stalking her. I'm like, oh, that's Real creepy. quick, think of Spider-Man 2. It's literally almost the same thing. Stalking? Except, no, not stalking. He, he, he was, was stalking her. her, Aaron. No, He was the, well, stalking her. Like, okay, real quick. I know he was stalking her, but it's literally, if you look at it, it's similar stories with the whole MJ and Peter Parker and then Gwen Stacy like he had to stop doing it because he wanted to have some type of relationship with MJ whereas the Peter and Amazing Spider-Man cannot go near Gwen Stacy it is similar stories he's willing to give up the whole Spider-Man mythos but to me it comes down to writing and pacing Amazing Spider-Man 2 did not have the same pacing and writing that the second Spider-Man had second Spider-Man was complete 100% better than the first and the first was amazing too Mm mm-hmm yeah, it was a. I so all right. I'm on a level with you. So and for Paul me, Giamatti in John Adams, he's the most insufferable fucking actor I've ever met. Okay, I'm done. You don't I mean, like you Paul met him in John, You met. Wait a minute. You met him in John Adams. No, no, I didn't oh, meet him uh, in John, oh, oh, John Adams. The oh, HBO the, no, the movie. Series. Yeah, I know you're talking about. You didn't well, like him in that. Insufferable. You, he is yeah, insufferable. Said, yeah, I. I don't know, man. In Billions, like he's insufferable. But I like him. I watched, I watched that, too, and then you just imagine the smell back then. God. <laughs> Everybody's so musty. liked him as uh, the orangutan trainer in Planet of the Apes? I didn't oh, my see that. God. <laughs> <laughs> That's don't not the first one, is it? Fucking Marky Mark. The first one with Marky Shit. Bart, yeah. First one he played the orangutan Mark. that oh, trained the human. Tim Burton did that one. Yeah, Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah anyway, yeah. I w- I'll just say this. As a fan, I wasn't really focused too much on the writing for Amazing Spider-Man 2. I'm just going in to see what product is going to be given to us. As a fan, if I'm looking at it, I don't like all the loose ends. There was more loose ends. So I can understand what you mean with the pacing. There was a lot of problems with the introduction of these characters. I, I For me, I think Electro was too much. I like Jamie Foxx playing Electro. That wasn't that wasn't his think fault. It was way too much what they did. But again, it was going off the Ultimate Universe, 
and I think you cannot translate a lot of these ultimate characters into film. You just can't, in my opinion. What did you want to see more? Because I know what I wanted to see, and I didn't see it in this film. I would have liked to have seen Green Goblin out the gate, like the first one with Willem. Dafoe. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked yeah. to have seen that. We Even if he wasn't... That. Yeah. Okay, they did it with James Franco. He was in the first yeah, and they Raimi made movie. The Green Goblin. They made Harry the Green Goblin. Right. I thought that that was garbage like, dude garbage man like chris cooper i think would have did well i mean i like chris cooper he's a good actor yes, he, he would have done well and i don't know about that i don't he, yeah. is, a good, he is a good actor with cj well, you mean I as green that. goblin green goblin yeah, yeah, no, yeah. okay i can't see okay. willem, willem dafoe like if you look at him chris cooper doesn't have like willem dafoe looks like a goblin yeah, well, I'm saying, I'm saying, if they're that's the prerequisite, you gotta look like a yeah, goblin. I, well, I, but, the eyes, it's in the eyes. Yes, crazy I, eyes. Okay. So I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is Chris Cooper's goblin could have been the ultimate goblin. Go and look at the ultimate goblin. That's all CGI. His, the way he carries his voice, his pitch, it would have been very well for him to have been the ultimate guy. But I just don't know how that would have translated on screen. So I'm kind of torn. The Sinister Six, they were right, because Craven the Hunter was supposed to appear. And they couldn't even get him in there, which again led to the Schumacher issue of putting too many fucking villains too busy. in these movies. Yeah, it's way too much. Harry Osborn in this movie didn't really get started like until like an hour into the fucking movie if you remember that shit like yeah they introduce fucking electro's character with yeah. the bad comb over they introduce harry like we've already known him like no bro yeah, yeah. he we didn't know this guy and then you want to we want us to believe that peter knew of him even though in the first movie he didn't even really know what Oscorp was. He like had he to, didn't even talk about it. He didn't have. I, he snuck his way into Oscorp. He snuck is, his way in. Like Dean DeHaan, who plays Harry Osborn, he looks like I know who he a looks male like. escort. Uh -oh. He looks like a male <laughs> escort. I thought hell oh. him to the side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just like he, he looks like he should have like a sailor outfit on. You know like, who I thought he looked like? <laughs> I thought he looked like the person I thought could have been spider-man when we talked about it in the last episode i thought he kind of looked like a young dicaprio i thought he looked like a young dicaprio mm, that's a stretch yeah but maybe not he... as i don't know i don't yeah. judge men but he just looked related to yeah. him like oh yeah. man he could have been dicaprio i'm not saying he's good as dicaprio i'm but... gonna tell you dean DeHaan is a good actor yeah he looked uh, like he was good i would have liked to have seen him play spider-man he could have played spider-man he was fantastic in this one movie that bombed, which was Valerian. I loved Valerian, and it bombed. So if you ever check that out, that's a good film. Do you guys want to talk about the people who auditioned for this to be Peter Parker instead of Alex? Andrew. Andrew Gar. Where am I getting Alex Garfield from? But overall, what do you rate these Two thumbs up, two thumbs down. What do you rate for these movies? <laughs> so for, for Amazing Spider-Man 1, what do we give that? Two thumbs up, two thumbs down. It's a shaky thumbs up. It's like shaky thumbs up yeah, for the first you. amazing spider-man for the first amazing spider-man. Yeah, I, I agree. Shaky. shaky thumbs up. So I yeah. will, I do that three. So three shaky thumbs up for Amazing Spider-Man 2. Oh, I'm going to give it a, two dicks down like just terrible <laughs> you know what right. the first one by forbes forbes ranked the film as the seventh greatest comic books superhero film of all time i'm not gonna lie andrew garfield is extremely talented actually i watched him in uh, tick, tick, boom. yeah amazing yeah, yeah. He's so good social and network i don't want to take right? away yeah social network also what is it red riding yeah which is uh like a horror kind of murder mystery type thing uh red oh. riding i think it's 1979 mm -hmm. those movies all those movies that trilogy is amazing and andrew garfield's in it playing a journalist who okay comes upon this conspiracy you guys if if i recommend anything it is that series he's also in hacksaw He's in Hacksaw Ridge, Ridge yeah. I think. Yeah. Hacksaw yeah, Ridge. Did. Yeah. And, you know, everyone is pretty talented in that, except for Paul Giamatti. Um, <laughs> 
I didn't know you hated him. This I yeah, love this new I, found. I, this is new. This is new. I thought me. he was a great I actor. You would have liked him. I yeah. Thought I liked nope. Him. Not in the least. I just it, insufferable, and he seems <laughs> like he's an asshole. But that's just me. That's just me. so you don't watch. He's the, like the nicest dude in the world. And <laughs> you don't yeah, watch billions. You don't watch billions at all. No, because he's in it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, Aaron. If you don't think if you think he's insufferable, then yeah, you don't watch that. Oh my god, he's it's very insufferable in that. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's just good at being insufferable, though. He's good he's at it. Always like John that. Adams. John Adams, man. Just and then also no, he plays. Look, he even played the same character as Rhino. It's the same David Schwimmer effect, where it's oh, the, uh, oh same, come right? on. No. <laughs> Don't do They're that. They're both the same. There's. He's better than Davis. He always plays some like angry, yeah, loud, does. like <laughs> verklempt dude. Joe Pesci. And it's the same thing with Dave. Joe Pesci is a great fucking actor. He plays nah, an angry minute, guy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait no, a minute. not all. Have you seen Gone Fishing? No. Oh, with, with, with Danny Glover. With Danny Glover, Joe Pesci, yes. and Danny Glover. And My Gone cousin Fish. Vinny. My yeah. cousin Vinny was a. My fucking cousin Vinny's amazing. good. Yeah. Raging My Bull. Raging Bull, yeah. No, and yeah. I said he was a great actor. I'm just saying yeah. they he does kind of play the same character though. Loud, no, 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 Casino, Home Alone, yeah, loud, Goodfellas, yeah, yeah. But no, it's different. No, no, it's different. Paul Giamatti plays Paul Giamatti, like having to wait for the bathroom, and he's about to shit okay, his pants. Okay, he's a character actor. I'm not I'm not. But Pesci him. is the same thing, though. I mean, have you ever heard Pesci talk about how he terrorized Macaulay Culkin on the on, on No, set? but I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He talks about how he actually, you know that part where he's like, he's going to bite his fingers off? He actually bit him hard enough to leave a fucking mark on yeah. his fingers. Yeah, <laughs> Pesci did that. And then Pesci said And we were that, worried about said, Michael Jackson. Yeah, and huh. Pesci, Pesci talked about how when ever Macaulay Hunkin tried to get close to him, he's like, get the fuck away from me. Like, he huh. was just, because he knew that he was trying to stay in character and so on and so forth. So yeah. he was just a dick to Macaulay Hunkin. <laughs> so, so you anyway, didn't like this. Nobody liked the second one, right? Nobody. I, no, that's, nobody a big, that's a big no. I give it a thumbs down, but I would still watch it if it came on. The, no. Fucking Alex no. Garfield's character, Peter Parker. Andrew. Fucking... Andrew Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> Alex Garfield. Andrew. Alex, Andrew. Who, who is Alex Garfield? Who is this guy? I don't know. Sounds it's like a baseball a player. I, I like probably, Alex Rodriguez. I'm probably confusing yeah. him with that. But his character finds go, golden coins in a calculator that somehow his dad put in. And he finds a subway, a la like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, of the secret lab. It's like Jesus Christ, this is terrible. It's, it's comic based, bro. It's comic based. Come on, man. That's, Just because that's it's where... comic based doesn't mean it works for film. It was like thrown in. In the middle of that, he had all these. He had a relationship issue with Gwen. He had an uh -huh. issue with Electro. He had some thing with Osborne, and he didn't want to give Osborne his own blood to save him. That made no fucking sense either. He's like, oh, that's my dog. He's like, man, I'm sick. I need help. I need a cure. Spider-Man's yeah, kind of Spider blood can dick, help me. A, he was like, man, nah, I'm good. It's a dick move, but <laughs> there was what no, a the, consequences, the consequences would have been greater. I'm no, studying it this right have. now in college for philosophy. The consequences would have been much greater because you don't know how his blood being radiated would have affected him having this 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 disease. We don't even know what the disease is. You just said it was syphilis, so you had no fucking yeah. idea. It was pretty. It looked a it, lot like syphilis. It made no point. fucking sense. That's my yeah. point. Like, yo, you my dog, Aaron. You like, yo, man. I need help. Like, Spider Man can help me, and I'm on. And I'm Spider Man. You don't think I'm going to lay, like, hey, man? I'm going to give you my like, back. I'll help. He's a hero. First thing I would, thing I thing I would say is, man, Spider Man's pretty short. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's black. I see yeah. his big old dick hanging from his <laughs> costume. Like. <laughs> and, well, so, yeah, I mean, that's a whole nother issue we can discuss later on. But we'll wrap up. All right, we'll guys. get into the next episode of the Marvel Spider-Man. Tom, uh, Tom Holland. Alex Tom Rodriguez. Holland. Alex Rodriguez. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Place for so, the Padres. Yeah. All right, guys.
All right. Thank you for listening, guys. Check out the blog, the website, afterschoolspecialpodcast.com. And we appreciate every single one of you guys. Thank you for listening. One quick thing, you guys. Mm -hmm. I understand you might not want to leave a comment or rate, but you can at least share these episodes and listen to the old episodes if you wouldn't mind. Thank you guys to our new fans. We love you all. And El Celsior. What else? Excelsior, Jesus fucking Christ, Alex Garfield. (laughs) (laughs) And sponsored by Tequila. (laughs) And Folgers. Best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. Hey guys, it's Aaron. You think you could do me a big fave? Wherever you're listening to this right now, rate and subscribe. Find new episodes where you listen to podcasts and look for us on all the social media sites and Gmail at After School Special Podcast at Gmail, After School Special Podcast at Instagram and Facebook, and After School SPE3 on Twitter. Mm. What's going on? Something just happened. Uh, um, breaking um, news ESPN Sports Desk or Don Desk. Oh my God. Oh, they tied Tom Brady right and now. his fake teeth and hair has done it again. Oh my God, this guy—he—he he had to have sold. He was in Michigan, and he just said one day he got on his knees and says, "Hell, Satan, just just give me all the advantages that I already have, and let me be the best champion ever." Oh, dude! And I'll give you anything you want. I'm sure. I'm sure. How he is he doing this? this? I'm, I'm sure he has sigils at his house. I'm sure he does like the, what is it? The a masturbatory sigil every game. Like, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Jerking off and saying it and then shooting it into a piece of bread and eating it. Him and Sammy oh, Davis exactly. Jr. I, 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 <laughs> how, how in the... How? All, if you want to join Hollywood, you have to do something like that. But usually it's killing a kid and then having the blood poured all over you. Can you pick oh, the kid? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> what? All right. Allegedly. Time out, time allegedly. Out, time allegedly. Time Amazing time Spider-Man. Out, <laughs> this has nothing to do with Spider-Man. Yeah, it does. It has everything to do with Spider-Man. Yeah.